Hello, citizens of the internet, and welcome to the Dad's Guide to Minecraft. Let's play. Today is all about those buzzy bees. There's been some cool updates in Java 1.15.2 that we're going to take advantage of today, where we can spawn in bee nests attached to trees. From there, I'll show you some techniques for removing those bee nests, and then we'll see if we can get this garden growing even faster. So if that sounds like a plan, Let's get started. Okay, before we venture on the whole bee expedition here to make our own little bee nests and bee houses and beehives and all the things bee there is, um, I wanted to do a couple things. One, we're going to need to fix this chicken cooker. Um, it was pointed out to me by a subscriber, Donald Kidd, that um, Frilioth uh, uses a hopper mine cart because the drops don't pick up as well with just a hopper underneath a slab. And I actually did some experiments on this and I will tell you, it's absolutely true that having a hopper mine cart underneath here versus a just a hopper will improve the drops of cooked chicken specifically by 70%. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, remove this stuff really quick here. And we are going to drop this down one um, let's take a look in here real quick. So it should be about equal numbers, cooked chicken to feathers. And as you can see, since this, since this has been running, um, we have far less cooked chicken than we do feathers. So great for a Fletcher trade, not so great for a food source. So we'll go ahead and, uh, take these chests out really quick here and, uh, drop in, um, just, we'll put it one lower and then put the hopper going into the chest one lower. And since we have room, we don't want that. Since we have room here, we're going to go ahead and um, put the chest down equal with this one right here. And it actually, it actually makes a lot more sense to have it down this level. So we got the hopper coming in here. Now we need a hopper mine cart on top of here. First, let's go ahead and make a, a hopper mine cart, which is just a hopper and a mine cart like that. Hopper mine cart. And you need to put a rail down on top of the hopper that you have down here already like that. So the minecart has something to sit on. There you go. Now that'll drain straight down into uh, here, but it should be way more efficient. And we'll watch that um, this episode to see, are we getting about equal amounts coming through here? We, we actually, you know, as a, a single player, player world really do not need that much uh, cooked chicken. We have so many sources of food now but um, you might as well make it as efficient as you possibly can going forward. So we'll leave that like that. And the other thing I wanted to do is we're gonna need bone meal. So back here, kind of out of sight, I'm gonna make an automatic bone meal little system because we have tons and tons and tons of wheat seeds. So for, for, for starters, we're gonna put a chest down like this and then let's go grab our hoppers again. We're gonna put a hopper coming into this side of the chest right here. And then we are going to put our composter above the hopper. Jump up here. We're gonna put our hopper going down into this composter. And then finally up here, where we don't have room for a chest, we can put a barrel and it'll drain down like that. So let's go ahead and grab our surplus seeds over here, which we have a plethora of, but not in that one, it's on this far one. And we'll go ahead and drop these into, and I'll put these in here for right now, just so we have space in our inventory. Grab all of our seeds, uh, we won't need those. I'll have to go to bed here in a second. Actually, I'll go to bed and cut back in a second. Okay, let's drop our seeds into the barrel up here. We should see those draining. They are, that's fantastic. This is what we want. Now, what'll happen is these seeds will go right into this composter and bone meal will eventually pop into here. So we'll watch that. This will fill up. See, it takes a while with seeds, um, but that's okay. I mean, we have so many seeds, it'll be good. We can also do this for our, and we should have a bone meal in here. We'll do this for our saplings too. Yeah, see too. Awesome. So we'll let that go and we'll get our bone meal for our trees. Now, the new mechanic for the hatching or the spawning of bees, uh, bee nests, is that you plant a tree 
Um, and then you plant a flower within two blocks of that tree. And then it has a 5% chance that tree of spawning with a bee nest on it. Um, so what we're gonna do is I clear this area out right here. We're gonna drop down flowers and trees. And I was watching a Pixel Riff video on this and he, he um, used birch uh, because they kind of stayed a certain size, which I thought was a really good idea. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. So we'll pop down a, a birch tree here. And I'm not interested in really cramming this. So we'll put some space in between. So we'll put a flower here and then we'll put another tree there. So we'll space them out like this. And then we can put, um, maybe we'll just do another one here. So we'll skip two and then put another flower or another tree down like that. So we'll just go ahead and do this straight across until we're either out of flowers or trees, which I think is gonna be obviously flowers. Let's do that right spot. And we'll put one here, put this down there and just continue across. And then as they spawn naturally uh, or grow naturally, um, we can also help that along with the bone meal that we've gotten so far in our inventory. So we'll go ahead and put a tree there, put a tree here. And I know this is not as a space, space efficient as it could be. Um, I just really am not that worried about um, having this work. So uh, I have, like I said, a lot less flowers than I do um, actual um, trees. So we'll go ahead and drop these down and then I'll space it out again. Any bees? Nope. Nope. That took a lot of bone meal. No bees there. None there. Nope. And I am out of bone meal. So let's go ahead and wait for the rest of these trees to grow and we'll see if we can get anything there. I'm gonna actually take these down so they don't interfere with the uh, other trees growing. And I'll be right back. And there we have our first bee nest. Now each one of these will spawn with two bees on the inside. So that took, let's see, I cleared this whole row out and I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, and there's a little bee. 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 in addition. And there's his little buddy. You know, we can feed these guys and make a third one. Let's just go ahead and do that. Oh yes, there you go, little hearts. Oh, so precious. See what do we got? Oh, there's a little bee. Hi, little bee. Yeah, this is awesome. I, I think it was a mistake to make them so rare uh, in 15 when it came out. And I'm not sure why they did that. Maybe they wanted it to be like something cool for you to find. But, you know, in real life, um, bees are quite common. So um, it, it kind of like follows suit that they would actually be common around the world. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and gather up our little trees here and I'll cut these down, uh, the birch trees, and then I'll be back and show you the next step that we'll do. Uh, another one, yay, it happened right. How did that happen? Oh, there must've been a sapling there. I'm like, that's pretty sweet. Okay, well, now we have two, that's even better, okay. We are styling. All right, I'm gonna keep cutting these down and I'll be back. Okay, so our first beehive um, now is full. So it has a honey level of five. You can tell this because these little holes, uh, I'll show you on this one right quick here, are like empty. Um, and this one has honey dripping out here and then honey dripping out of the bottom of this. So there's a couple things we can do. We can come up here and if we hit this with shears, uh, it'll drop honeycombs. And if we hit it with a empty glass bottle, we can get a bottle of honey. Uh, the bottle of honey is a food source with a good saturation and the honeycombs are used um, to build beehives. And so we have a choice here. There's a bee over there. He, he's like lost. I think I'm gonna need to lasso him with our um, lead and bring him back. They, um, I think that might've been the one maybe that I 
um, bread and he kind of wandered off. So we'll have to go get him and bring him back. But when you do this, if you don't have a campfire below the nest to make them passive, uh, they'll become aggressive and attack you. And when they attack you like real bees, they lose their stinger and they die. And we don't want that to happen. We want our little guys to stick around. So what we're going to do is we are going to um, leave this alone for right now. And then I'll get this guy, see if I can get him to come back here. And um, then I'll be back in a second and show you something super cool that you can do that I learned from another YouTuber. And the YouTuber I, was, I wanted to mention is a YouTuber named Jax the Legend. And I'll put a card up to his uh, channel um, and the screen right up here. And if uh, for some reason that doesn't show up, I also put a link in the description for this video below. But he does houses, he does uh, tutorials. But I would say the thing that I think is just amazing about some of the stuff that he does with keeping designs and tutorials on a technical level, elegantly simple. So he just did a video on bees and bee behavior and how to how to basically remove uh, bee nests and beehives um, contents if you don't have a campfire with you. That is so insanely simple, um, I love it. But one of the things he showed was that um, bees will get disassociated from a, a home like this and um, if you put them on a lead, they will eventually reassociate with the, the, the beehive and go in. Um, unfortunately, this I don't think this one's full. Uh, I have a hard time telling how many bees are in here. But basically when it does, it'll go in and then the lead will drop. So that's how we'll know that he's associated with this. I may wanna go ahead and just clear some of these leaves away maybe as well, not hit one of the bees as they come out. Oh, there's a little baby bee. So it wasn't the baby bee that wandered off, it was one of the adults. So there should only be like, there should be five bees between two beehives or bee nests. But we got a problem now because all these are full. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and show you some of these techniques. So the first one over here is if we have a campfire and I made a little a space below it, you put the campfire down here and as the smoke rises up, it like in real life, a smoke pacifies bees, so um, they will not attack you. That's why beekeepers use uh, smoke to, uh, when they're uh, harvesting honey or having to, to work with the, uh, the hive at all. So I'm gonna go grab an empty bottle and uh, some shears and I'll show you the, the contents that we can get out of here. Okay, I have bottles and I have the shears with me. And I, I did wanna talk about bee behavior a little bit, the advantages of having bees by your uh, gardens. Um, see the little particles on its behinds? <laughs> Anyhow, um, they, that's pollen from the flowers. So they'll, the, the behavior of the bee is that they'll fly out of their nest, uh, go around a flower, gather pollen, and then fly back to their nest and it converts it to honey. If there is cropland in between or farmland in between with crops in it, um, the pollen as it like kind of falls down acts kind of like bone meal does. So it's a good way to have uh, bees naturally help your crops grow at a quicker rate. So like right now, uh, since our flowers are all right here, the bees aren't traveling beyond this area to get over here. But if we put like a row of um, bee hives and uh, nests or whatever right here, and then we had flowers over here and those were the closest flowers. The bees would fly across the crops to get the flowers and then fly back to get to back to their houses. So I think eventually that's what we're gonna do. But um, for right now, I'm just kind of happy that we have some bees in our game. I mean, this is the Buzzy Bee Edition and um, we finally have it. And this person right here does not want to associate with either one of these blocks. So uh, I'm not sure what we're gonna do with him. So let's go ahead and, and grab some uh, and hopefully he doesn't come in and get me here. Um, let's grab, yep, some honey. And we have our honey in a bottle here. And this this is a food source. Like I said before, that has really good saturation. The other way, and this one's full too, and I'll use, I'll use shears for this one. You put a block in front of the holes because bees, 
what they can go in from any side, but they can only leave from the side that has those holes. So this is from Jax. Um, it's so simple. So basically you put this in front like that, and then you come with shears, hit the side and you get honeycombs. Yeah. And see this, this bee right here is not angry at all. So it, it probably is not associated with either one of these somehow. And we'll have to figure that one out. But right now we have basically everything that we need um, being produced between these two. Now, if you have silk touch, you can remove these bee homes um, or bee nests from the trees and place them wherever you like. Um, I have silk touch on this ax, so I, I can do that if we wanted to, or I can make um, a beehive. And the way that we do that, let's see how many honeycomb we got. Okay, great, we got three honeycomb, that's what we need. So let's go over to the crafting table inside our little starter house over here. And this is basically a similar to recipe to a bookshelf where you have uh, six wood, so we'll get a six, six wood planks, it can be any wood plank like that. But instead of books in the middle, you use honeycombs across the middle and you get a beehive. So we'll pull that one out. And this little dude here, as we breed up more bees, we can bring the bees over this direction. So let's go ahead and uh, do a little experiment. Um, we'll put, let's see. Let's do um, these two planks like this. And we'll put it right here. We'll go up like that. And hopefully this works. I, I actually have not tried this, so uh, bear with me if it does not. And we'll put the bee home or the bee hive up here like that. And if you ever like moved any files before, this looks like the cardboard boxes that you uh, kind of fold together to move uh, files from a file cabinet. But I digress. So let's go back over here. And maybe we can get um, this bee right here to adopt a new house over there with the beehive. Are you going in? Let's see. Follow them around for a second, see if they do anything. Hopefully not go up into the stratosphere like it did before. It likes to sit on top of trees. I'm not exactly sure why. Yeah, look at that. It's going straight up like a balloon. Got one. Got the other one. All right, come on guys. <laughs> Enough of this shenanigans. Hmm, let's take you guys over here. Maybe we can get you guys to go into this um, beehive. So I'll put you right here on this. Hopefully you reassociate over here. Oh, they'll probably come over to these flowers because those are closer. Uh, let's go ahead and take these out for now. Okay, look, so we have the lead right here. That means that the one of the bees, uh, I think the baby, must have associated itself now with uh, the beehive. So hopefully it's inside there and not dead or lost. Uh, that would be very sad. So another thing you can use uh, in addition to leads uh, using flowers will coax them um, back to where you want them to go. So let's get them back over this direction. Maybe get them close to their house, see if we can get them to go in. There's really nothing more satisfying than just holding down your hit button and clearing a complete garden patch out. It's like just destruction. See right there, the little green sparkles as the bee flies over with the pollen. That is the effect of um, the bees have on crops when they uh, fly over and pollinate. Isn't that cool? So that has the effect like a, like a little bone meal um, I think it's not as quite as potent as bone meal, but it's um, it's really neat to see that there is a natural way within Minecraft now to uh, fertilize your crops and keep them growing. That's uh, very neat. And with this last bottle, we now have four bottles of honey and over four honeycombs. So I'm going to show you the last little bit of crafting recipes that we can do with the new with the new drops from the bees. 
So if you have four honey bottles and you make it into a four like this area, you have a honey block. And then you get your glass bottles back so you can go ahead and fill those up again. And if you have the honeycombs, you put them in four like that, you get a honeycomb block. Now, one of the special properties behind the honey block itself is that not only it looks kind of cool, but when you jump on top of it, you move slower and you can't jump as high. So this could be used as parts of mini games and, and traps and things that you want to do in your world or with your friends. Um, but for our purposes, we'll probably end up using these in some contraptions later on. But for now, we're just going to collect these things. Uh, I'll continue to collect honey and honeycombs out of these uh, beehives. I'll probably make more beehives from this bee nest and see if we can get a whole bunch of bees flying around here and pollinating. As you can see, the garden's doing quite well. And that brings us to the end of the episode. If you've liked what you've seen and would like to see more content from the Dad's Guide, please consider subscribing to the channel, smashing that notification bell so you don't miss an upcoming episode. And if you like this content, then please leave me a like as it really helps the channel grow. Until next time, bye for now.